Am I the asshole for not taking down my Halloween decorations? My husband and I moved into this neighborhood about two years ago after we got married. We haven't been able to celebrate Halloween in the last two years due to COVID. It's our favorite holiday, so we decided to go all out. We filled our yard with tombstones and skeletons. All of our bushes and trees are wrapped up in fake webbing. The tree closest to the street having a six foot huge web and spiders dangling from its limbs. The final touch was a huge rope web that we added extra webbing to to fill out that hangs from the roof all the way out to the street. We're not into gory stuff, so we got a couple of fuzzy spiders to decorate and place around the yard. It took us hours to decorate and we were so excited. My husband looked like a kid in a candy store. Yesterday while my husband was at work, I heard a knock on my door and it turned out to be my neighbor. He looked absolutely frantic. I didn't even have a chance to ask what happened when he yelled in my face, you need to take all this shit down. I was really taken aback. This neighbor's always been very nice to us. I've seen other houses decorated in the past few years. Maybe not to this extent, but I know it's not against our HOA rules. I decided to ask if that was his issue just in case. He looked at me completely dumbfounded and started going off. Cut the crap, you need to put all this away. My wife has arachnophobia and your yard practically gave her a heart attack this morning. I kind of screwed up here. I didn't think our purple fuzzy spiders with big googly eyes would even scare a little kid in our neighborhood. So I said, you're pulling my leg, right? He got in my face and practically stepped into my house. You're going to scare my wife to death. If you and your husband don't take this shit down, I'm reporting you. I can make this a real problem for you. I started seeing red and getting really uncomfortable because I was completely home alone and my husband wouldn't be home for hours. Even if I wanted to take it down, it would be impossible without his help. So I said, listen, this is our first time getting to celebrate Halloween in our new house and we were really excited and put a lot into our yard. We don't even have any gory or graphic decorations. None of our spiders even look realistic. Can we please not do this right now? He said, I don't give a shit, take it down or else. He didn't really give me any chance to answer. He just started walking back to his yard. Our decorations are not scary. Other neighbors have even said our yard is cute and we spent a few hundred dollars decorating. It would be a huge waste to take it all down, and I haven't told my husband yet because I know he's pretty petty and he will throw a fit. He might even decorate with even more spiders out of spite. I refuse to take down the decoration because it's really important to us. Am I wrong for begging my daughter not to have any more children? I, 58 female, and my husband Rob, 61 male, have two kids. Erica, 35 female, and Mike, 30 male. Both kids are married, but Erica and her husband Steve, 38 male, live nearby to us and this issue concerns them. They work full time and have two kids, 5 male and 4 female. Five years ago, my daughter asked my husband and I if we would be willing to become their full time childcare so she could continue to work and afford their comfortable life. We agreed, but we didn't discuss much more than watching the baby and their expectations. I was a teacher and retired two years before I could take my pension, so my husband continued to work and we made a few sacrifices like vacation and adding to our savings, but we were able to make it work so I could take my full pension at 55 and my husband retired a year later. Our arrangement worked and we enjoyed having the kids, except by year three. During the lockdown, they were both working from home. They expected us to keep the kids all day and we wanted to split time each week since their preschool and daycare was closed. We settled on two days with them and three days with us and my son-in-law complained about it pretty much every day. Things got better when the kids were able to go to school. Fast forward to year four, we have a bit of a blow up over kindergarten. My daughter did not want her five-year-old to start school in the unknown but I insisted that he needed to go because I needed the break. I also asked for their four-year-old daughter to spend more time at preschool and daycare programs. Son-in-law complained about the cost but I pushed anyway. They relented and then this past spring, son-in-law pushed for us to take the kids for a week so that they could go on a vacation. We said that they had to take the kids and he said they couldn't afford it. No one went on vacation. Maybe that was too much background, but I felt like the context is important for what I said. My daughter and I were casually having a conversation the other day and she mentioned she had an OBGYN appointment and test. I asked if everything was okay and she said Steve and her were expecting for baby number three. I asked her what her childcare plan was and she looked at me like I was crazy and said us. I said that it would have been nice if she told me this before trying for another baby. She said it is none of my business. I said it is if I'm providing five more years of babysitting. 
I then told her that we were not viable childcare options for a new baby and begged for her to reconsider. Her daughter is going off to kindergarten next year and we will feel like we are getting our days back to some extent and refuse to start all over again with an infant. Erica said that we were making her choose between her dream of three kids and financial stability. I argued that she has two beautiful children and they were financially stable and they shouldn't ruin that with another baby. I might be the asshole because Erica feels like we should have told her sooner. I feel like I am not because I never agreed to a lifetime of raising their kids. I don't understand. I don't understand parents like this, right? If someone's watching your kid, like, you ought to be so appreciative. Am I the asshole for refusing to give my sister my daughter's outgrown baby clothes? Some backstory on the both of us. I, 23 female, am 26 weeks pregnant with baby number two, a boy. My sister, who we'll call Sally, 28 female, is about 20 weeks pregnant with baby number five, her first girl. I'm a married stay-at-home mom. We're technically low income, but we're comfortable and we have a savings. All this to say, we aren't necessarily financially sound, but we don't go without any needs or many wants. My sister is going on five kids and has a track record of choosing awful men, makes very poor life and financial decisions, never has any money for anything, and our family members have her kids in their care more than she does. Our family members also foot most of her bills, including previously providing money for diapers, formula, cars, gas, and money. My mother asked me if Sally had reached out to me yet, and I said no and asked why. My mom said that Sally's having a hard time and that her boyfriend had run off again. She lost her job, needed a bigger car for the kids, and needs baby stuff as she has nothing for the upcoming baby. My mom told Sally to call me so I could pack up some of my daughter's old baby items to give to her. I told my mom that I didn't have much to give to her and reminded her that I'm also expecting a baby. I told her I plan on sorting through our old newborn clothes to sell to the child's resale store to get credit back so I can buy my upcoming son some clothes as I don't really see the need in buying brand new baby clothes as it would help us save some money this way. I mentioned that we're also reusing my infant seat from two years ago, as well as the crib, bottles, and just about anything else that I held on to, which is fucking smart. Which is smart, because who has money to rebuy stuff every single time they have kids? Very, very smart. And there's a reason they have resale stores for baby clothes. Because the kids grow out of them so fast. That's a very, very, that's really smart. Very, very smart. My mother told me that I was selfish for not handing over any of our baby stuff because we have the means to purchase our son new items where Sally does not. I thought she said you guys were technically low income. She told me that Sally isn't as fortunate as I am because she doesn't have a good man in her life to provide for them and she just needs a little help. Sally then needs to get her tubes tied. That's the help that she needs. Stop having fucking kids. If you cannot afford to have fucking kids. Sally knew this before she got pregnant with baby number five. She knows that she's struggling. She knows that her family is footing the fucking bill. Sally needs to stop having fucking kids. I told my mom that it's not my fault that Sally has made poor life decisions, nor is it my obligation to help her provide for the children she continues to have, but can't properly take care of. I told her that I'm not willing to continue to enable her poor decisions especially when it will affect my family. But if the rest of the family wants to, then to go ahead. My mom has since spoken with Sally and our grandmother and told them my responses. I now have three very upset people hounding me, telling me how selfish and rude I am. Then why don't y'all just go buy Sally some fucking clothes? Go and buy her shit instead of coming to someone who's literally fucking pregnant and expecting her to give away her shit than to spend more money and replace it. Since I'm fucking selfish, let me be selfish and you guys go and provide for Sally. I didn't get Sally fucking pregnant. My husband didn't knock her to fuck up. It's not my responsibility to make sure she has what she needs to take care of a child she knew she couldn't fucking afford before she got knocked up. I now have three very upset people hounding me, telling me how selfish and rude I am and demanding that I help my sister because family helps family. I'm now being told that if I'm refusing to give her our old items, then I should be at least willing to put forth an effort to buy or find her some items in clothes that she needs. Am I the asshole here? Girl, absolutely the fuck not. You are not the fucking asshole here because you want to keep your stuff for your baby that you are currently 
cooking. It's not like you're planning to have another child in five years. And even if you were and you didn't want to give your shit away, that would still be fucking fine. But you are literally with child right now. And they're expecting you to give away your shit to somebody else who knew they couldn't fucking afford to have a baby in the first place. My goddamn question is, Sally has not one, not two, not three, not four, but five motherfucking kids. Where is all the baby stuff that she had for the last five, four kids? That's my question. Sally, this is not your first time at this rodeo, baby girl. This is not even your second time. You were considered a veteran. Where is all the baby stuff from the past kids? Where that shit at? Stop, stop throwing your shit away, Sally. Then you would have stuff. You would literally have everything you need if you stop throwing all your shit away, Sally. Your family is the fucking problem. The fact that your entire family pitches in to literally fund her life when she's not doing anything to help her goddamn self is the fucking problem. If I was her sister, the only way I would be trying to help her is to encourage her to stop fucking having kids. That's the way I'm gonna help. I'm gonna give you some advice. Stop having fucking kids if you cannot afford them. That would be the only way I would fucking help Sally if she was my goddamn sister. Cause no, this is absolutely ridiculous. Uh -uh. I got knocked up by a man who ran the fuck off of me, but because you had a baby, I need you to give me your stuff and I have every right to be upset because you could just buy more. Bitch, no. If you had a job, you'd be able to have a goddamn baby shower and hopefully your coworkers will buy you something, but that's out. <laughs> absolutely not if you weren't constantly waiting for your fucking friend your family to pay your goddamn bills buy you cars buy diapers and fucking formula they'd probably throw a party for you and you would get some baby things but no you didn't burn all that up girl you ain't got no job and your family take care of your, your kids any other fucking time of the year so no they not gonna help you up girl <laughs> hell no sally is no mm -mm. sally needs to get her fucking shit together and keep her legs closed Am I wrong for throwing my rings in the ocean after my husband told me he had an affair? This is the dumbest thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. This past Sunday, my husband, 29 male, and I, 27 female, were out on our boat. We were just relaxing and talking and just having a really good morning. When all of a sudden, my husband gets really serious and tells me he has something to tell me. He said, baby, I'm so sorry, but I have to tell you something. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry I had an affair. For context, my husband thinks he's a comedian. He says dumb all the time, but he's never joked about our relationship, our marriage, cheating, nothing like that. But the way he said it, I fully believed him. I can't explain it, but I was blinded by rage, hurt, and I'm not a confrontational person at all, but I stood up took my rings off and I chucked them into the ocean. And I don't know why I did it, but it was just the first thing that came to mind to do. My husband's jaw hit the floor when I did that. And he immediately started yelling at me that it was just a joke, a prank, that he wasn't serious and I was an idiot. My jaw dropped then too. And I yelled and I called him the same names. I cried too because I realized I threw my lovely, very sentimental rings in the ocean. We've been arguing four days. He says I'm wrong, I say he's wrong, and I have no idea who's wrong. I mean, yes, I threw $10,000 worth of rings in the ocean, and it's very likely we will never see them again. But in my defense, he looked me in the eyes and told me he had an affair. I'm upset about my rings, and I've apologized for throwing them, but I just don't feel like I'm in the wrong. Story time about how my grandma got married when she was 14 years old. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I said I'm on Instagram. So just picture it. I'm sitting with my 94-year-old grandma in the kitchen. And suddenly she starts talking about my grandpa. My grandpa passed away almost 10 years ago. And to be fair, they did have a wonderful marriage. By all accounts, and by all of my family's accounts, they were totally in love until the moment he took his last breath. Here's how the story goes. First time they met, she was 12 years old. He had just gotten back from the war. She was walking home from school with her backpack, and my 27-year-old grandpa pulls up in his car. He starts to tell her that she's going to be his future wife, and that he's going to talk to her parents so that they can get married. He kept inviting her into his car, but she kept saying no. He followed her home from school every single day. As my grandma is telling the story, everyone is laughing, except for me. Finally, one day, he followed her to her house, knocked on the door, and requested to speak to my great-grandfather. They spoke for an hour, and that's when my great-grandpa promised my grandma to my grandpa, and he gave them permission to get married when she was 14. At first, he wanted them to get to know each other. So they started going on dates. Part two is up.
story time about how my grandma married my grandpa when she was 14. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It's on my Instagram. And if you want longer story times, go to my YouTube. This is when my great-grandfather promised my 12-year-old grandma to my 27-year-old grandfather. My great-grandpa thought that it would be best they wait two years so that they can get married when she's 14. In the meantime, he suggested that they start going out on dates. Yes, a 12-year-old girl and a 27-year-old man. By the way, as my grandma is telling this story, all of my cousins are laughing at this. I'm trembling in my seat. She explained to us that for those two years, my grandfather was on his best behavior and that essentially they read books together, they walked together by the lake, and he would take her out to see movies. She said at the time it was a big deal. Going to the movies was like a big treat. I guess it made me feel better knowing that he didn't try to do anything to her at the time. Still, it's absolutely disgusting. Finally, the two years passed and at this point, they're totally in love. They get married. Both their families attended this wedding. How did no one in their families think it was inappropriate? Watching a 14-year-old get married to a 29-year-old man? But it gets worse. Part three is up. Story time about my grandma married my grandpa when she was 14 years old and he was 29. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It's that I mean on Instagram. This is the third and last part. And if you want longer story times, go to my YouTube. Two years pass and they get married. My grandma even told us that the night of their wedding, my great grandparents gifted them a night at a hotel so that they could have some privacy. You can imagine what happened. My grandmother described it as the most liberating night of her life. Two months later, she was pregnant. Their first baby was born right before she turned 15. And then she got pregnant again at 15 and then at 17 and then at 18 19 and finally 20 my grandfather got into oil in his late 20s he made about a million dollars by the time he was 35 though he was able to give them a very comfortable life he purchased a manor they had three housekeepers one butler and four nannies and they had a really happy life my grandma says my grandpa was always affectionate with her and she said they blessed their bed every single night after she finishes telling the story all of my cousins laugh and think it's cute i was disturbed i asked her why it was okay to get married at such a young age and then i said would you have wanted me to get married when i was 14 that's when she said that times were just different back then the war was happening and people didn't know if they would live or die she also said that when a catch like my grandfather turned up most parents were looking for a man like my grandfather to marry off their daughters grandpa was educated handsome driven had great work ethic and he took care of her which is what he promised my great grandpa and then when the children came he more than took care of them he even took care of my great grandparents too he ended up moving them into the manor in their old age and they were fully taken care of by the staff apparently the manor was big enough to fit in four families now i loved my grandfather he was a great kind man and i myself benefited off the generational wealth he paid for my education and i'm now a lawyer for it but still a huge part of me feels absolutely disgusted with the history of their love even though back then that might have been normal i think it's horrendous yes they had a great love story but she was a child apparently this was a big family secret None of the uncles or my parents wanted us to know. I got into a huge argument with my parents for hiding this from me. They think I'm totally overreacting. Am I though? I guess I'll need more therapy. What do you think? Am I the asshole for not letting my neighbor's kids play in my yard until they pay to fix the damage to my house? Disclaimer, this is not my story. My father bought the house in the 80s. I inherited it three years ago and have been living in it since. I have two acres while my surrounding neighbors maybe have one and a half if they're lucky. The house is very small, a two-bedroom, two-bath, so I have a very large front and backyard. I use maybe one-fifth of my backyard as a garden, and the rest is basically an empty field. I've always loved kids, so I was happy to let my neighbor's kids play in the field with the understanding that they would respect my property. Most of the kids are great and very respectful and understand that it's not their backyard. The problem is with my neighbors to the right, they have five kids, one female, three male, five male, five female, and seven male. They generally run around unsupervised. The seven-year-old is in charge as much as a seven-year-old can be. Five days ago, the kids were playing baseball and the seven-year-old must have lost track of the five-year-olds at some point because when I came home from work, I found their name sharpied on my wall, along with some rude drawings all along the right side of my house. I found their parents the next day and asked them to pay for the paint that I'll need to cover it up. They were offended, accused me of lying, and said they weren't going to pay. Later that day, the five-year-old male decided it would be funny to throw rocks at my house. There were several dents on the side and two of my windows were broken. It was $800 to $900 worth of damage. I talked to the parents again who accused me of doing it myself to make their kids look bad. I decided to not let their kids use my yard until the damage is paid for. When they came by one morning to play with the other kids, I politely explained the situation and said they would have to leave as they weren't allowed to play here anymore. About an hour later, their mom came by and cussed me out. She said I'm a horrible person who hates children because I'm bitter and can't find a husband. This Reddit title reads, I am leaving my husband because of my mother-in-law. Mm-hmm. I have been married to my husband for five years. 
Of those five years, I spent the last three years taking care of his mother. His mother is very sick. She can hardly go to the bathroom on her own. I have to wash her and clean her. He never discussed it with me. He just moved his mother into our house without asking me. Mm. I suggested that we should hire a nurse and he said it was a waste of money. Why do we need to hire a nurse when we can take care of her? My husband promised he would help, but he hasn't lifted a finger. I do everything. I feed his mum, I bathe her, I clean her after she does her business. I'm exhausted and I feel like a lesser version of myself. I don't recognise myself in the mirror anymore. I always clock on for her and my husband doesn't help me, but he expects me to help his mother. He just comes home and plays video games. The plague of video games on our society. I know. It's so, <laughs> like, typical. <Yeah. laughs> it's so typical. <laughs> I complained about this and he yelled at me. He said he is very stressed about his mother and he needs video games to calm his nerves. I know I, I, know I just gave shit to video games, but, like... I get as a sidebar that maybe they can be helpful for some people, but like, Mm -hmm. okay, whatever. The only time I saw him do anything was his mum's birthday. We were about to start a family last year, but he said not now and has the audacity to complain that I do not look myself anymore. So he says I have eye bags, my skin looks dry, my hands start to resemble his own mother. Ew. I'm just done now. I sacrificed my job for him. I left my job and took a part-time job just to take care of his Mm mum. I should have left when four years ago I asked him to lend me some money for my dad's operation and he gave me a bunch of excuses. Mm. So there's a massive double standard going on here. Mm. He even criticised me if I spend too much time with my own sick dad. Today at work, he is going to be served. I have been planning my escape for a few months. I'm staying with a close relative. I have money saved. I'm glad I didn't have kids with this man. Mm, God. A whirlwind. Unfortunately, I feel like that is a bit of a common story. Yeah. A lot of women take on this role of carer. And because we don't value carers in society mm. very highly, um, yeah, you end up feeling really, really burnt out. It's totally unfair. My thoughts with this person, like, I'm glad that at the end she's kind of like, I'm done. Yeah, she's like, he's being served. <laughs> yeah, which I don't think is always the case. Like, yeah. sometimes people are so in it and drowning in it that they can't see that it's not right and that she's being taken advantage of. So, props to this woman. Good for her. Am I the asshole for supporting my neighbor and his fight against the HOA to keep his pet wallabies, which are mini kangaroos? My next door neighbor has three pet wallabies. They look like tiny kangaroos, which apparently is legal in South Carolina. The HOA CCRs mention nothing about pet size limits, but they're not happy about the wallabies. There's really no reason to it. Our backyards are like 140 by 100 square feet, which is apparently more than the recommended bare minimum for keeping pet wallabies, which is 50 by 50. I Googled it. There are also three of them so that they can socialize. The animals are clearly kept for, not being abused, and most importantly, they are not a nuisance. They are not bothering anyone, and our president is just a jerk who wants to get rid of them. Since our HOA CCRs mention nothing about them, he's trying to amend it or get a vote to make them remove them or be fined. Most of the neighbors said no because nobody else cares. I don't care either, so when the HOA president knocked on my door asking me to take his side, I said, I'm not interested. Please don't bother me again. He kept trying to talk me into it, so I slammed the door. Another HOA member came back a few days later and said, I told you guys I'm not interested, so leave me alone. I slammed the door again. She kept ringing my doorbell, and when I opened, she said that I was so rude, and I told her that she was pissing me off and she needed to leave. And I slammed the door again. I started getting letters asking for me to vote, and I got another visit from the president again. I told him he had 10 seconds to leave my property before I called the police. Am I the ass? Okay, buckle up, because today we have an update from the alpha mother who kicked out her 16-year-old son when he presented as an Omega. Oh, boy. Update. 
I've been reading the responses under this post and am frankly appalled by them. I am not in any way omegaphobic. I had an omega best friend all throughout middle school. These people that are replying obviously do not understand the struggle and stress most alphas face. Our entire job is to take charge and protect our pack and household. So when this whole situation happened, it tore me apart emotionally. My son and I ended up meeting and we had a long conversation. I told him that if he wanted to make this choice, he needed to accept the responsibility of an Omega and find a nice alpha to settle down with. What era is this person from? From there, things got a little heated. And I do admit I said some stuff I regret. When he told me that he had no plans of finding an alpha, I immediately told him he needed to be put on pheromone blockers. How does this story keep getting worse? He looked at me and told me that he loved me, but if I wanted to continue to have a relationship with him, I needed to get more educated on what being an Omega means. I love my son to death, and it's why seeing him go down this road is so painful. I told him that I don't want my son- Oh, wow. I don't think we can say this on the podcast. What'd she say? Uh, she said, I don't want my son being a slick sticker. In what universe is that okay to say to anyone, let alone your own son, who has to grapple with the fact that he's presented as an Omega all by himself because you won't offer him the support he needs? You know what? I need a second to hold off. I will start with the backstory. Ah, uh, I love the backstory. We love this. I met my boyfriend Brian six years ago through our part-time job. His best friend, let's call him John, was working there at the time too. When I first met them both, I actually had a crush on John first. However, I then grew closer to Brian and started dating him the month before my 18th birthday. At the beginning of last year, I started to get a small crush on John again. It just wouldn't go away. Over the year, we hung out pretty much every weekend. During the week, we would talk every day. Our talking did get flirty from time to time, but it was all very harmless. During this time, my relationship with Brian wasn't doing super well. He knew that John and I would talk every day, but he was just happy his best friend and his girlfriend got along so well. In September last year, a group of our friends went away for a few days together. And well, this is where shit went down. Brian was in a bad mood all weekend, so I didn't want to spend much time with him. When he went to bed at night, I would stay up with some of the others and play board games or watch a movie. One night though, Everyone went to bed and it was John and I still up. When we were alone, he started to brush his fingers up my arm and held my hand. John! Scandalous! A scandalous. <laughs> then this happened every night for the rest of the trip. When we got back home, Brian and I had a massive fight and I ended up leaving his house crying. In a huff, I went to the shop to pick up a bottle of wine and ran into John there. He invited me back to his place and so I went. That night, we drank two bottles of wine between us and kissed. I ended up staying the night as I was too drunk to drive home. We shared a bed, but nothing happened. The next day, I called Brian and asked to have a talk. In that conversation, we decided to go on a break. During this break, Brian and I were still in contact, and Brian was working on being a better boyfriend and communicator. It was also during this time that I was seeing John, in secret of course, and we slept together on multiple occasions. The toxic part of me is like, yes! <laughs> no, no! Drama! Drama! He would even come over to mine and we would cook dinner and dance around the kitchen together. If I'm honest, he was giving me everything I wanted from Brian but never got. So, I broke off contact with Brian. I felt guilty for stringing him along while I was having a great time with John. However, when Brian and I cut contact, John also got distant with me and started to ghost me. Ooh. Later on, I found out it was because Brian had asked him to stop talking to me. I guess it's fair enough because they're best friends, but I would have appreciated it if John had told me at the time. Since then, Brian and I have gotten back together and our relationship couldn't be better. Oh. John, meanwhile, has a girlfriend. At the beginning of this year, our group took a trip to a nearby winery. After a few drinks, it started happening again. John started to get touchy with me by rubbing my legs under the table and grazing his fingers along my lower back when he thought no one was watching. Mm. John, get your hands oh, away! Right. And Those frisky little hands, <laughs> Jonathan! <laughs> And all these things gave me massive butterflies in my stomach and tingles all over my body. When we got home from the trip, we started to talk occasionally, but not often. I have recently been having dreams about John and can't stop thinking of him. However, my relationship with Brian has been the best it has ever been, and he has brought up getting engaged multiple times this year. I can see myself having an amazing life with Brian, but I can't stop thinking about John. What do I do? 
Thoughts and prayers for Brian. I feel quite bad for that man.